This is Matthew Hatchett, a.k.a. Hatch, and you are now listening to the One Bar and Lupagus Show. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lupagus, and today we are talking about some free agent quarterback options for the Vikings, because damn, we know we need help at the backup position. Yeah, Sean Mannion is turd. That's what he is. And uh, we've been knocking out some positions little by little here. Uh, some free agent guys, and, th- and there's one comment thread here. These are all kind of these aren't names that are going to excite you. These are kind of bottom barrel guys, cheap options. Um, most of these guys in the quarterback position at least have some upside. Maybe like a pube or two, not much, but some. They have upside because it's the possibility of not being Sean Mannion. That is the upside. That is the upside. And some start still are young, still have dreams ahead of them, hopes, potential. But let's hop right into it. Let's Potential jump into this. Is- um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a guy, maybe not familiar to everybody, who maybe not the casual NFL fan, but we're going to talk about Cincinnati Bengal gunslinger Brandon Allen. 6'2", 209 pounds, great, perfect nipples on him. This guy has started some games in the league. He's a career record of 2-6. and six. So unlike Sean Mannion, he has gotten some victories. Uh, he's thrown eight touchdown passes career passer rating of 76.9 so again at least a guy who has won some games led his team to victory he's gonna he's gotten thrown a mix a little bit in his career um you know i'm not gonna sit there and, and say like brandon allen is uh the solution or anything but i do think he'll be an upgrade over sean mannion and um you know he's got some weapons around him and he's kind of a gamer so uh i'd be okay with brandon allen yeah, Brandon Allen's fine, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Everybody's just going to be kind of fine. I'm not going to pretend I know a ton about Brandon Allen. I know he's bounced around Jags, Rams, Broncos, Bengals. I like that he's started some games, um, former six-round pick. I like the fact that he's still 28 years old. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I, I would welcome any new young blood to this roster. Yeah, and I do think he's got some grit to him. We saw him fight against the Vikings last year in the game. Denver almost stole from us. Um, he battled out to the end. So you like that about him. I think he's got a little bit of, a little bit of balls on him. So uh, Brandon Allen, yeah, might be okay. All right, next up, let's go to the West Coast. C.J. Bethard, San Francisco 49er. You know, I am I'm damn near shocked when I looked and saw that he was a former third-rounder. I do not remember him being a third-round pick. He's I'm a sh- I'm ashamed of myself. He's 27 years old, came out of Iowa in that round three, 2017 NFL draft. Uh, 12 games started, 18 touchdowns, 13 picks. Um, again, kind of like Allen. I'm just glad he's got some starting experience. He he uh, he filled in for, I believe, Jimmy G. Um, not an overly fantastic, potent offense, but he did uh, he did pretty well. Yeah, and I believe it's pronounced beat hard. Beat yeah, hard. Uh, no, but CJ about third, he actually has come in during games and then done well, hung in there, rallied his team. So I like that about him, that he's uh, kind of been a spark off the bench. Uh, I think Sean Manning is kind of a wet match. If he came in off the bench, wouldn't ignite anybody's fire. So I do like that about uh, Beathard. I do think he can make some plays with his legs as well. And I think it's pretty key what you said about him playing in a shitty offense. Uh, he comes to Minnesota. You got some pretty sexy weapons out there on the outside. Delvin Cook to hand the ball off to a couple of nice tight ends. So, uh, you know, maybe he'd do better here, but uh, C.J. Beathard, in my mind, is actually a couple notches above Sean Mannion in the backup chain. Yeah, and we're when we're talking backup quarterbacks, we're probably not talking about an heir apparent or somebody that we're going to continue to groom. It's more of if Kirk Cousins goes down during this Kirk Cousins era, somebody that could step in and win a couple games, really. And and Sean Mannion doesn't appear to do that. Yeah, and you know. Beathard's only 27 years old, so there is a little bit of hope that he could develop into maybe a more solid backup. I don't think he's going to be a starter anytime, but maybe a guy, if you don't end up getting a high draft pick, a guy who can compete, be a bridge, uh, kind of a bridge player until you do find that person to be your future quarterback. Uh, so, yeah. All right, let's talk about the most exciting name in football, the most exciting name on this list, and that is former first-rounder Blake Bortles. Yeah, you know, I got to start by saying I was never a Blake Bortles fan. I thought it was a reach when the Jakes took him. I was, I just, he was one of the first guys I actually watched a lot of film on because that was the year the Vikings wanted a quarterback, and I just wasn't impressed. I wasn't seeing the first round potential everybody was talking about. But, um, you know, he had some early success in the league. You look back at 2015, he threw for 4,400 yards. 
uh, 35 touchdowns to 18 interceptions. So I think he can run a little bit as well. So he has had some, um, he's had some success in the NFL, which you can't say Sean Manning has. Uh, his career has kind of just fallen off in the last couple of years, uh, especially the last just two or three. I mean, um, scrapping. I mean, he's just looking for scraps, table scraps to get on an NFL roster lately. Um, you know, he doesn't make the best decisions with the football at times, doesn't have the best overall mechanics. But I think as a backup option, um, let's not kid ourselves, he's pretty much light years ahead of Sean Mannion. Yeah, we got it. You absolutely hate Sean Mannion. That is becoming very, very evident. Uh, Blake Bortles, I mean, he, he lit up the stat sheet at Jake at, in Jacksonville. But, I mean, I bet 28 out of those 35 touchdowns were in the fourth quarter. And uh, he just was uh, airing that thing out constantly because they were losing. But Bortles, what I like about him is what you said. He can make plays on the uh, on the ground. I mean, he rushed for seven. He's rushed for over seventeen hundred yards. That's doesn't seem right, but it is. And uh, he started seventy three games. He's still only twenty eight. It seems like he should be like forty seven years old. So he spent the last year on the Rams, backup, um, hanging on the bench. He's probably going to be a guy that just kind of bounces around every year, uh, kind of like a Sean Manning or somebody, just kind of not That's really rude. ever going to be a starter again, but be a valuable backup. Yeah, and, you know, he can't be very expensive. I think he was signed, was it mid-season last year by the Rams? Um, so he's, like I said, he's been out there um, pretty much offering anything for anybody to sign him. Uh, he's fallen that low. So, uh, yeah, I, I do think you could have this guy not much more than the, the minimum, and uh, I think he would be an upgrade. So Blake Bortles, not a huge fan, but I do see the potential there as a, uh, a guy who can maybe come in and not lose you a game. He wouldn't win it. Defense would have to win it, but maybe he don't lose it for you. All right, let's talk about the Sudskis. Yeah, Nate Sudfeld, uh, Eagle quarterback. This guy's he's a pretty big boy, 6'6", 227 pounds. So he's definitely going to be able to see open receivers down the field. The question is, can he get the ball to him? Looking at his career completion percentage of 67.6, that uh, is very much up in the air. Uh, just he's throwing one touch on his career to one interception. So really from a production standpoint, he's not far behind our boy, Mr. Mannion. Um, but he has, you know, he's played in four games in three years, so you can't say he's uh, super experienced, but for a cheap option with a little bit of upside still, I think he could do worse than Sudfeld. Well, he's got that big old body, but he's also got the big old rocket arm to go with it. He's got a big old cannon on him. And he is a Super Bowl champion, 2016 Super Bowl champ, 27 years old. That's all we got to talk about for Nate Sudfeld. Yeah, there's really not much else to say. Um, all all right, let's talk. Uh, let's talk. Uh, talk got to talk about our guy. We got to talk about Sean Mannion because it's probably one of all these op options. He's probably the most realistic guy to come back. We love Sean Mannion on one year deals. We don't. The Vikings do. Um, and that's probably what's going to happen. I don't know why it wouldn't really at this point. Um, He's been there two years now. Uh, maybe him and Kirk Cousins have a great relationship. Uh, so apparently, Mannion can see things and can help Cousins during games. Uh, my fear is that when he does come onto the field, if he ever were to have to, um, he's just done nothing in his career. And that's what worries me. I, I don't know what you get from this guy. I think actually, if he were to come in, start a game or two, like let's say Cousins is out for, he plays the week eight, he's out for the rest of the year. I think the Vikings would be out there looking for a better option on the free agent wire if that were to happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, I, there's one little reason I want the Vikings to bring him back, and that is so he can get his first career touchdown in purple. God's sakes, can this guy throw a touchdown? I mean, he's been in the league too damn long. All these other guys we mentioned have a handful of touchdowns, and Mannion can't even get one. So he's oh, zero touchdowns, three picks, but he must be Zimmer's drinking buddy on the weekends. Oh, yeah. He must just, uh, I don't know. Um, there, there's some connection there that they love about Sean Mannion. My guess is we won't address the backup quarterback until about March 29th, and we'll bring Sean Mannion back on a one-year deal. Yeah, I, I feel like that's what's going to happen as well. Uh, any of those other guys, I'd much rather have them than Mannion. Um, you know, what, what's shocking, this guy's still only 28 years old. I mean, he's been in the league since 2013. I, I, another guy I thought was like at least 32 Sean Mannion, still pretty much a young buck uh, in the overall spectrum of things. But, yeah, I mean, ugh, if he comes in and has to start, that's very scary. And you kind of kiss your season goodbye if it comes to that. 
Yeah, and these uh, these are the guys we feel are probably realistic options. Um, there could be a, a saving grace here as far as maybe we find a, a, a better option at a cheaper price because there's actually quite a few free agent quarterbacks that are going to be going to backup jobs. I mean, you got Trubisky, you got Jameis Winston, Jacoby Brissett, uh, A.J. McCarron. There's there's some familiar names that could bump these guys, other guys down to, to be a cheaper option. Yeah, I mean, Tyrod Taylor is out there, too. Um, and, you know, a team might want Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's like 50 years old, but the guy comes in, he can still win football games. So um, those guys are going to cost more, and that's why we kind of stuck where we did, just knowing the Vikings cap situation, and it ain't good. We can't see them spending a whole shit ton of money on the back of quarterback position, even though, really, if you look at the overall scheme of things, Zimmer's kind of in that win it year, so you maybe think you'd want to have a better option than Sean Mannion, but... You know, maybe it's one of those things where if the season goes downhill, he just gets let go and you just tank. All right. Let us uh, let us know in the comments who you would love to have out of this quarterback group. If you got somebody else, remember, subscribe, like the channel here every damn day. And hashtag sauce. Hashtag wow. saucer. A lot of you are doing it. A lot of you are doing it. It's going to be a really, a really wide, wide pick selection that we're going to draw from here. Can't wait. Um, all right. So uh, those are the backup quarterbacks we are looking at, and we are also going to let you know about this. A group of wildcats is called a destruction.